the Crescent City, New Orleans. A feel of spring in the air here on the banks of the Mississippi. Mardi Gras celebrations never stop this time of year in the big city. In the Big Easy, it's parades and parties. And the week-long celebration for the UConn women's basketball team fittingly reaches New Orleans. They'll try to stretch the streak to 101 now on SNY. From the Devlin Fieldhouse on the campus of Tulane University in New Orleans, we welcome you to UConn women's basketball on SNY, the top ranked and undefeated Huskies with an American matchup against the Tulane Green Wave. Great to have you with us, everybody. Alongside Megan Como, I'm Eric Freed. <laughs> Meg made me do it, but I we're- <laughs> I did, but he also didn't, he almost didn't make it here. We're here. Kia Nurse is not gonna make it to the court here tonight, though. You saw her in that big win against South Carolina. She only played 18 minutes with an ankle injury. Well, she's in a walking boot right now, and you can see will not play tonight. We'll have more from Justine Ward coming up in a few minutes about the long-term status for Kia Nurse. Short-term, how does this impact the Huskies' rotation? And this means Crystal Dangerfield gets more time. Well, absolutely. Now, Crystal coming back from missing five games with that ankle and my goodness Monday against South Carolina she looks spectacular seven assists only two turnovers in 30 minutes this kid knows how to play especially in big games she's a tremendous passer but the more minutes she gets just the better she's going to be and, and it's all about confidence as a freshman 30 minutes in that thrilling win against South Carolina on Monday nights we have not made it to Cafe Du Monde as of yet for beignets at Cafe Ole, but maybe after the game. We've got a game to get to next. It's Tulane and the Huskies on SNY. Looks a little empty on Bourbon Street by <laughs> that picture there because <laughs> with NBA All-Star Weekend in town. And yeah, there's a lot of people in town. So this was 551. Oh, oh, this is what I look like after being in traffic for that. <laughs> 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 yeah, we had a little bit of an adventure, uh, Justine and myself. We'll talk about it. But uh, yeah, the, the fans, thanks, guys. Take a look at the starting lineups presented by Subaru. Sanaya Chong and Crystal Dangerfield with Katie Lou Samuelson, Gabby Williams, and the Fisa Collier. Colby Morgan, Leslie Vorpal are the two to watch. That backcourt, excellent for Tulane. Ready to play here at Devlin Fieldhouse. Eric Bruton, Norton Jones, and John Capolino are officiating crew. And it is my pleasure to say <laughs> I've never been happier to watch an opening tip than this moment because it was touch and go 
as we got caught in the streets of New Orleans. Dangerfield running the point. Here's Samuelson. Charge for Collier. Nice pass by Chong to Gabby Williams, who will go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Gina Oriyama, 980 career wins now as they worked out this morning at the Tulane practice facility. The men for Tulane had a game here at 1 o'clock this afternoon, so the schedule a little out of whack for UConn. They will go back home tonight. And Lisa Stockton, the Tulane head coach, in her 23rd season, Tulane coming off a victory against Cincinnati here at home to end a three-game losing streak. They won by 11. One of two for Gabby. Little pressure in the backcourt here for UConn. And again, it's this backcourt. Vorpal, the senior from San Antonio, second on the team in scoring, third in the conference in assist. Morgan leading the team in scoring, fourth in the conference in scoring at 19 points a game. Yeah, Morgan does so much for this team. Great block by Collier on the help. It will be Tulane basketball with 10 to shoot. Good help defense there from Collier, knowing where the ball is, sneaking over and helping out. Shot clock down to four. Wyatt hands it off to Vorpal. She's going to have to hoist something and will not hit iron. It's a shot clock violation. Good defense, first possession for Connecticut. Well, I feel every time UConn starts in full court pressure, it just gets them mentally a little bit more focused defensively. And there, an outstanding defensive set. Samuelson uses the screen, open look, too strong. Williams, as she does so well, skies for the rebound, but turned it over. Knocked away by Harlan Wyatt. Wyatt's got some size, a sophomore from Atlanta. Will work on the inside. It's a team that's fourth in the conference in threes made, 33% efficiency. Williams to Samuelson, nice finish by Katie Lou. And a player is down back behind the play for Tulane. And that's why the official blew the whistle and the athletic training stamp will come out. It's Wyatt who goes down. Oh, it looked like her right leg buckled right in front of the Connecticut bench. Oh, yeah. Looks like she hyperextended that right knee. Whoa. She's going to need some help off the court here. Wyatt, a sophomore, averaging seven and a half points a game. That's good for third on the team and five rebounds. As we mentioned, she's some size for this Tulane team. Had seven rebounds and four blocks in the win against Cincinnati. Let's watch one more time. Right leg. Yeah, I don't. I can't even look at it. You know, they they have a very young front court, so. To lose the 6-2 sophomore at this point in the game, not a great start for Tulane. They need as many bodies in the lane as they can get. Kasinia Marjorevich is into the game for Wyatt. Here she is, number 34. And it went off of Meredith Schulte. It'll be Connecticut basketball. Good uh, active hands defensively by UConn. Samuelson, Collier, if you give her that shot, she'll make it. And most likely, she'll make it. Certainly these days, the percentage that she's shooting, what is she, 67% from the floor? Third in the country at 67%, exactly. Great start for Connecticut here in New Orleans, up 5 nothing. And a foul is going to be called on UConn's Collier. Battling in the paint. Yeah, just too aggressively trying to get around that low post. Four Paul trying to spin on Dangerfield. Chong held her ground. 
The shot by Crookshank off the mark. Williams on the feed from Dangerfield couldn't score. Now Sanaya Chong, wide open three. Rebound for Collier, who goes right back to the basket with it, gets the contact. Count it and foul. Tremendous aggressive hustle on the offensive boards. You can see those blue jerseys all over the place. Tulane not boxing out. Collier again finding herself in the right place at the right time and finds a way to get, get fouled while scoring once again. Three-point play for Nafisa, who scored 18 points, pulled down nine rebounds on Monday night before fouling out. Outstanding defense so far from Connecticut, really taking Tulane out of what they want to do. Another turnover. Dangerfield pulls it back out. Collier with the cut to the basket will go to the free throw line. She started it on the defensive end and almost finished it on the offensive end. Well, so again, great team defense. That double team right there is what fo forced that turnover. And watch Dangerfield. She is such a phenomenal passer. She saw that play developing. Substitutions for Tulane, well, this is a good sign as, well, it's Thompson. I thought it was Wyatt, but it's 15, not 25. It looks like Wyatt has gone back to the locker room, actually. So we'll see if we can get a report from the Tulane folks. 10 nothing, Connecticut. Courtney Latham, a senior, is into the game for Tulane. Here she is, number 33. Tulane has attempted two field goals so far. Here's their third. They're still looking for their first make. And that's a shot that Morgan typically makes. Samuelson, little pull up. Now Tulane. Tulane has had some ups and downs this year. And part of the problem was right here, number three, Colby Morgan. As she gets fouled going to the basket, they she is so such a great scorer for this team. They got caught standing around and watching. They got to play. Don't look at her. Play with her. Nice aggressive take. Foul was on Chong. Foul was on Chong. So first free throw is good for Morgan. It's the first point of the game after a 10-0 run to start for UConn. Morgan's been on a run. Three straight double doubles. She's gone for 20 or more 15 times this season. Dangerfield tried to get it in to Collier, but it was kicked out of bounds. Well, Dangerfield was outstanding for Gino Oriam on Monday night. I don't think he knew how good she was going to be, but well, as Gino is wont to do, he'll jokes around about it a little bit. It's like every three months she plays a great game. <laughs> Baylor. Well, <laughs> the bigger the game, the better she plays. That's fine. Here she is attempting a three and a rebound pulled down by Madison Wells. Better box at that time by Tulane. Lisa Stockton really going to her bench here in the early going. Of course, losing Wyatt to an early injury. Williams got a hand in there, but it's still picked up by Thompson. First field goal for Tulane comes from the sophomore from Georgia. And a foul will be called on Thompson on the inside, trying to defend against Gabby Williams. Of course, Gabby Williams was the star of the show Monday night. What? A performance, 26 points, 14 rebounds, four assists, four steals, but just the way she took over piece. the game. Yeah. yeah. She is spectacular. Collier rolls to the basket. And an offensive foul is called on Nafisa Collier. Two fouls on Collier. Really smart heads up play by Tulane to get there. And take that charge.
Collier staying in the game with the two fouls. Collier has to back off of Morgan with the two fouls. Williams got in the air, nicely done by Tanae Thompson. Came in averaging three points a game, already has four for Tulane. Natalie Butler will come in next dead ball. Dangerfield lost the handle, gives it off to Williams. A lot of people arguing why Dangerfield wasn't called for a walk. Samuelson's three. Won't stay down, and Vore Paul has the rebound. Good little run here by Tulane. They fell behind 10-0. They've scored the last six points, and Williams makes sure there's not a second chance. Collier, what's the call? Blocking foul. Boy, that's a dicey moment there for Connecticut. Collier playing with the two fouls, but it will be a call against Tulane. All right, you can exhale a little bit because we've got a timeout here with 4.22 to go in the first quarter. Moore Paul picks up the foul. Free throws when we come back. Twelve six, UConn. The Fisa Collier just scored a chance to finish off a three-point play. But Mekomo, how close was this to her third personal foul? You know, I, I think they could have called it. I do. They could have. But you know, it was close. But I think they made the right call. Crystal Dangerfield getting the start with more on Kia Nurse and Dangerfield's role. Here's my navigator, Justine Ward. Eric, well, Kia Nurse is likely out for two weeks due to a stress reaction in her right ankle. You will be seeing. Crystal Dangerfield starting in her place and Crystal told me she was having a bit of a rough patch ahead of the South Carolina game and it was Gabby Williams who took her aside gave her some advice and Crystal said it's Gabby Katie Lou and Kia who she really relies on for advice in these kind of situations guys. Thank you Justine. Well I think for Crystal Dangerfield it's going to be a question of if I could take a line for Bill Belichick no days off. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. Well, you know, and, and think about it. When has Crystal Dangerfield ever worked this hard in her life, right? And there's a lot of basketball yet to play for the UConn Huskies. Natalie Butler is in the game for Katie Lou Samuelson. So Collier stays out there with the two. Gabby Williams takes a tumble, and Butler has her first rebound. 13-6, Connecticut.
Gabby can't get it. There's Natalie Butler trying to find the loose ball now after she originally had the rebound and it was last touch by Tulane. That time, but when Butler caught the ball, don't bring it down. It makes it easier for the guards to come in You're and whack the ball away. Keep it, Keep up. it up above yeah. your head. Butler walked. Stepped into the shot. Turnover number three for Connecticut. Butler's got a nice mid-range jump shot for a 6'5 kid. More pressure in the backcourt. Dangerfield almost knocked it away from Latham, and now Dangerfield gets whistled for the foul. Latham did a really smart job there. Nice play drawing that foul. First personal on Crystal, fourth team foul of the quarter for Connecticut. Again, the depth being tested for UConn with Kia Nurse out, as Justine mentioned. Collier rips down the rebound. And for Kia, you really get the feeling, too, that she would play if <laughs> the stakes were a little bit higher. But you got through the South Carolina game. She played 18 minutes. She really aggravated that ankle injury in the first early, play of yeah, that South Carolina game, Carolina yeah. game according to Gino Oriema. Off the miss by Butler. Here's Vorpal. Can't let her get loose, but can't find the mark yet. And the rebound for Butler. I think it's going to be like a Crystal Dangerfield thing. She'll have that walking boot on for a couple of weeks. Yep. Just let things calm down and then get back into rhythm. Always better to err on the side of caution. Chong. Feeds it into Williams. Back outside the danger field and a three second violation called on Connecticut. Well, a lot of rhythm in that first couple of minutes of game, but now UConn out of rhythm and one of their key players, someone who is now going to be coaching on the bench a little bit, <laughs> Kia Nurse. I asked her if she wanted to come join me if you didn't show up here tonight. <laughs> Morgan banks in a three. She seemed to look on Colby Morgan's face like, well, I didn't really mean to bank that in, but I'll take it. Tide turn here a little bit in the favor of Tulane after the 10-0 run to start for Connecticut. Collier stayed out there with the two fouls. Chong will try a three and make it. First points for Sanaya Chong, averaging just shy of eight points a game. Played 38 minutes against South Carolina on Monday night. Just continues to play steady, and she loves that left corner. Morgan used the little pass fake to try to get to the basket, but UConn still made it tough on her. Gabby Williams a little behind the back dribble, remember. She does it all. She, Butler's was, a, in yeah, she was a guard in high school. Butler's in trouble. UConn still with it. Dangerfield, deep three. Gabby Williams is going to get called for the foul. Skied up and got the put back, but got whistled for the personal. Yeah, but prior to that, she threw one of the two lane kids to the floor trying to get around her. That's the first personal on Gabby. So there's a shot. Watch. See, she, you saw her bumper with the right arm just trying to get around. Good call by the officials. So that's five team fouls on Connecticut. Two free throws now for Colby Morgan. 78% free throw shooter. Leading the team in scoring and rebounding and steals and three point shooting. Leading the team in scoring here today. Shakira Harding, a senior from Louisiana, will come into the game as Morgan will get a little bit of a break with 1.15 to go in the quarter. Collier. Sanaya Chong for two. Thompson pulls down the rebound. Crystal, 
Here, a lot of talk on defense for UConn. That was Butler and Williams on the back end. Directing traffic, knocked out of bounds by Crystal Dangerfield. Seven to shoot for Connecticut. Good team defense, good help. You mentioned the communication. You can hear them talking. Five to shoot. Williams pulls down the rebound. Shot clock is off. Game clock at 24 and counting. Dangerfield. Butler finds a cutting Collier who can't score, but there's Williams on the offensive glass to put it in for two. Spectacular offensive rebound from Gabby Williams. Game clock winding down. Harding hoists it up, and Crystal Dangerfield pulls down the rebound. It will be a seven-point lead for UConn at the end of one quarter. They came out locked in on defense. Shutting out Tulane in the opening moments, jumping out to a 10-0 lead. Tulane's battle back to make it a seven-point game at the end of one here on SNY. UConn women's basketball on SNY is brought to you by People's United Bank N.A., putting the power of know-how to work for you. By Trantolo and Trantolo, Connecticut's personal injury law firm. Save time, call nine. By the Connecticut State Farm agents of the game, Steve Boyle in Fairfield County and Matthew Bob in Bristol. Speak with them today. And by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Turned out to be a perfect day here in New Orleans. Temperatures in the mid-70s here inside Devlin Fieldhouse. It's a seven-point game at the end of one. Time now for Meg to break down things in Como's Court Vision. Well, how about great spacing? I love how the dribble, dribble penetration makes the defense react. Watch, great back cut and the super pass from Butler at the high post. Check out the elevation of Gabby Williams on that offensive rebound. You know, just having inside position against her for a defensive rebound is not enough. You have got to get a body on her and box her out. She's got three offensive and three defensive rebounds. She is a beast. 3.6 rebounds, two assists, and a steal in the first quarter for Gabby Williams. The piece of Collier still out there with the two fouls. Morgan steps back, can't get it. Katie Lou Samuelson back into the game. Both teams struggled from the floor in the first quarter. UConn was 6 of 18. Tulane 3 of 13 from the field. Kyla Irwin also into the game for UConn here in the early going. Shot 
Shot clock at eight. Latham trying to get around Irwin. Back outside for Harding. Two on the shot clock. Harding can't get it, and Irwin rips down the rebound. Great position in there by Irwin. Good feed by Samuelson to Collier for two more. The yeah, Fisa Collier, four or five from the field, Meg. We've talked about Collier's efficiency, and she just, there's no extra movement. Just catch, turn, and score. Thompson flips in the corner. Tough shot for Morgan, challenged by Chong. Irwin has her second rebound. Samuelson feeds it to Williams. Chong, catch, set herself, couldn't get the three. There's Gabby Williams reaching out. Hot pass for Irwin to handle, and it's a turnover for Connecticut. Back to Justine. Eric, in the huddle in between the first and the second quarter, Gino is telling them, you know, we don't run offense. The idea is not to run offense. What we want to do is we want to pick up the ball on the other end of the floor and score in transition. Defensively, he was telling them, guys, stop two lanes, front court passes. Eric? We'll keep an eye for that. Thank you very much, Justine. Pass in deep. Williams rips down the rebound off the miss by Majerevich. Collier knocking down the three pointer. 15 points for the FISA. She's saying, You're not going to guard me out here? Well, I will drain it. Well, you get an idea of how much trust Gino Oriema has in her, but also how much he really likes her because he can count on her to do everything right, especially on the offensive end. And she's been playing with two fouls for a while, so he and knows her, he can yeah. leave her out there. And her confidence is soaring at this moment. Williams rebounds the Latham miss. Lafisa piling up points. Great find by Sanaya Chong and a foul given by Tulane as Collier will go back to the free throw line. What a find by Chong here, and yet another rebound by Williams. Nice job by T Chong, knowing what she wanted to do, firing the ball, threading the needle. Tell you someone else whose trust level is going up in the eyes of head coach Gina Oriema, that's Sanaya Chong. You really get the sense that because she's been playing her best basketball, and Gino just called her down and they were talking and going through some things, but. That's someone who has really stepped up here. We've talked about it time and again her senior year. And he's she's really become a vital piece. That core four we talked about in the first 15 games of the season, That's well, right. you got to add a fifth. Well, and, you know, the big thing for coaches is that they want to be able to know what to expect and trust their players. He has the utmost trust in Sanaya Chong, and she has absolutely earned it. Good box out by Irwin. She has another rebound. UConn cleaning up on the defensive glass here in the first half. Collier was calling for the ball. They just couldn't get it to her. Irwin rolls to the basket. Can't get it. Not done yet. And she touched it last. It will be Tulane basketball. That's one thing we've seen with Kyla Irwin. We usually don't see it in the first half when she plays. It's usually been in the second half, but she's someone who is not afraid to take a shot, not afraid to stick her nose right into yeah, the middle of things. You know, she's really, I, I'm happy for that kid. She's worked really hard and she's worked her way into this rotation. Talk about confidence. She's got tons of confidence right now. Open three won't go down. Another rebound for Connecticut. This time it's Collier who hands it off to Chong. Sanaya lost the handle for a moment. Gets it back from Irwin. Williams calling for a triple team comes and Tulane takes it away. Morgan throwing off the legs of Irwin who got in the way of the pass. Tulane basketball. Well, obviously Williams is going to command a lot of attention in the lane. You saw Morgan come from the other side of the lane to triple. And when, you know, Williams has to see that coming and just get rid of it. She tried to, but really well defended by Tulane. 
In and out, Williams tried to run right into a rebound, and now she'll accelerate. Crystal Dangerfield back into the game for UConn. Williams and Collier have gone the distance so far for top-ranked Connecticut. UConn has outscored Tulane 7-0 here in the second quarter. Seven on the shot clock. Collier to Dangerfield. Two on the shot clock. Dangerfield gets it off in time. Rebound, Majerevic. Harding. Harding deep three. Tulane still shut out here in the second quarter. Samuelson comes away with the basketball to Collier. And the crowd is booing because they think she committed a foul as Collier walks. Now, I can tell by Katie Lou's reaction, she's thinking she's getting fouled. And she did push off a little bit. I think there was some acting by Morgan, but there was a little bit of a push off. Timeout on the floor with 4.47 to go in the second quarter. Tulane hasn't scored in this quarter, and UConn's up by 14. As the regular season winds down, make sure you have your seats for the final home games, including Senior Day against Memphis. That's next Saturday, the 25th of February. Pick your seats and print at home at UConnTickets.com. And be sure to stay with us at halftime. Gary Apple, Kara Walters will recap the first half. Plus, you'll hear from Katie Lou Samuelson on team leadership and her role when it comes to that on the halftime show presented by your local Ford dealer. And a look at Jackson Square a moment ago here in New Orleans. New Orleans, some fond memories for Gino Oriema in this UConn team winning a couple of national championships. <laughs> That's that. That's silly. She is five of six from the field. The rest of the team is three of 17. UConn a plus 14 in rebounding margin. You know, obviously you go with what's hot, but Collier's gonna hope her teammates start stepping up and knocking some shots down. You got to give Tulane credit. They've done a really good job defensively taking away what UConn wants to do. Thompson will get the first points of the quarter for Tulane. Dangerfield, Collier, Williams, Chong, Samuelson, the five on the floor for Connecticut on top by 12 here at Tulane. Samuelson had it knocked away for the moment by Morgan. Morgan's done a good job on Samuelson. There she is. 
Stepping in front of Samuelson to get the steal. Kayla Meduitarungi is into the game for the first time for the Green Wave. Eleven different players used by Tulane. Meduitarungi gets shot blocked by Chong. Samuelson spinning on Morgan. Morgan holding her ground. And you're right, Meg, another example of her doing a pretty good job defensively against and the I, top score for this Connecticut yeah, team. I think Samuelson showing a little bit of frustration right now. Morgan drives the pivot foot. It's a traveling, uh, more Paul, rather, with the travel. Collier with the two fouls has to play very cautiously on the defensive end. Yeah, you see, she went over and said, well, no, I'm going to step back. <laughs> I don't want to pick up number three here in the second quarter. I'd like to see Samuelson. If you want the ball, get down to that low post. Morgan can't guard you. Chong can't hit. Thompson. Yeah, again, it's Collier who has to let her go. Took a moment for Thompson to realize that, and then it's tipped up and in. By Williams. <laughs> Trying to figure out who to give that hoop to, and now on the defensive end, Tulane. It's very similar to the first quarter, Meg, where UConn jumped out to a 10 nothing lead, and then Tulane started to play a little better, especially defensively, made a couple shots. Second quarter, they fell behind 7 nothing, and now getting a few stops. And now an offensive rebound. And a traveling violation called on Madison Wells. Yeah, she drags her right foot. Watch the watch 15 Williams. She hits it and sure enough scores for too late. I think they're still trying to figure out who gets credit for that basket. <laughs> May take a moment or two. Samuelson, clean block, kept in play by Thompson. Gino is irate yelling at the official. And now taken away by Connecticut. Dangerfield. Williams. Knocked away by Thompson. Last touch by Collier. You, you know, Gino can't be happy with the lack of composure that his team is showing right now. You got to give Tulane a lot of credit. Playing tremendous defense. Timeout call with 1.45 to go in the second quarter. Now Lou is having a really hard time there, fronted by Morgan. Now here, she's trying to create something. Defended really well by Colby Morgan. Now here, posting up again. Nice weak side help coming over from Tanae Thompson. So they, they have made it a point to not let Samuelson get going here tonight. And it's, you know, unfortunately for number 33 there, it's a trend, you know, she just hasn't scored well the last couple games. Katie Lewis, one for five from the field, 0 for two from outside the three-point line. She does have a couple of assists, but just the two points. Collier setting the tone for UConn, 17 points. I mean, far and away the leader in this game. Thompson and Morgan, the only two scores for Tulane. Eight for Thompson. She got the credit on the one that Williams knocked in, and seven for Colby Morgan. How much of this can you attribute to Kia Nurse not playing? I think they miss her presence out there. Morgan turns to Collier with the two fouls, standing her ground and getting the block. Yeah, she was, her feet were planted, hands straight up in the air. She played that wisely. Williams turns, can't score. That was one of the things that Oriema was upset about heading into the last timeout. He was shouting at Gabby Williams, telling her to shoot the ball when she's open. She did that trip. Now the loose ball, the tie-up, possession arrow, Connecticut. Well, there is Kia Nurse missing her first collegiate game with that right ankle injury. And all she can do is offer encouragement, a little coaching from the bench. It's so hard to sit there when you're injured. You want to contribute. You want to play. It's brutal. Chung. Finds Collier, and an offensive foul called. 
And that's yep. three fouls on the Fisa Collier. You know, Chong went right up to her, and if I read the situation properly, she led Collier into that foul. UConn a little late as Tulane got the ball in quickly before Irwin could check into the game, so Collier is still out there with the three personals. Tulane should go right at Collier. Or Paul with the drive and the kick and the three-pointer from the freshman from New Zealand. Adoriga Rungi with the three. It's been forever since UConn has scored. They've gone seven minutes. And Dangerfield's going to launch a deep, deep, deep three and make it. How about that for a freshman? Nurse is right up there with Tierney Lawler as the top cheerleader on that UConn bench. Two seconds to go in the quarter. Thrown up, tipped around, and uh, UConn's up by 10 at halftime. I got to give a lot of credit. I love the way Tulane played. They played smart defensively. They took away a lot of the options that UConn wanted to look to. Let's hear from Gino with Justine. Gino, how much of what we saw in that first half was a factor of not having Kia Nurse? I don't know. I don't think that much of a factor not having Kia. I mean, obviously a little bit, but, um, you know, they're, they're they're putting four people in the lane and they're daring us to shoot jump shots, and none of our guys can either make one or want to take one. You know, so we throw it to somebody who's not open, and, and we get a kid's third offensive foul almost because we won't shoot an open 15-footer. So... Uh, I think in the second half, we need to shoot when we're open and act like they're going to go in because they didn't go in the first half. So half the time they go in and half they don't. So we'll see what happens. All right. Thanks, Coach Eric. Back to you. All right, Justine. Thank you very much. Low scoring first half for a team that averages 86 points a game. Just 28 points on the board and three coming from long range from Crystal Dangerfield. Gary and Kara standing by with the halftime report next.